أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وصحبه وبارك وسلم أما بعد جماعة المسلمين مع أن البرادس نسستس السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to another Juma talk post Ramadan Juma talk our thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unreservedly who have given us the opportunity to have traveled through the month of Ramadan and of course that travel has brought us to the point where we have now <coughs> emerged from the blessed month of Ramadan from the Shahr Mubarak, the month of the Quran, the month of luminescence, light, which is the Quran, the light of knowledge, the light that has developed and ignited in the human being a mindset, if we so want to accept it, that according to the history of the Muslims from the time the seventh century has changed the world forever. Whether it's the art, the sciences, akhlaq, adab, whatever. And as we know, the very first contact of this light, of this luminescence of the Quran, the very first contact of that revelation with human reason, with the rationality which each and every human being has been endowed with. In Ramadan, in terms of the wahi that Muhammad Sallallahu was commissioned to deliver to humanity, was as we know the ayah the very first eye of the first revelation. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaqa. Now, the word iqra there, read. How must we read? Bismi rabbika alladhi. Read in the name of your Rabb who created. In other words, that first revelation, that first contact between the revelation and the reason was to bring to the mind, to the intellect, a situation and a realization that our Rabb, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the creator. Now what does that actually mean? It means, brothers and sisters, the creator of existence itself. So how do we try and turn our minds around that? Does Allah not exist? Of course Allah exists. Do we exist? Does the universe exist? Of course it exists. Can we then compare this existence, this existence which has a beginning and an ending, to the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You will say, obviously not. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in terms of creation, brought existence into existence. How Allahu Akbar must the existence, if we, we can only call it that in terms of our humanistic terms. How great, how Allahu Akbar must the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not be subhanallah beyond our comprehension. And that first contact as time goes on, 
and we dig deeper and deeper into that to realize how infinitely small, insignificant we are and will always be if we even remotely try in our arrogance to try and compare ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how insignificant we are and how Allah Akbar Allah is and therefore brothers and sisters so <coughs> is Iqra then not that word that opening that first contact with rationality with human reason is Iqra then not the emergence, the coming together between the wonders of existence of nature and the wonder of thought, of intellect that is nurtured by the brilliance of the Quran and Sunnah. One of the gifts, one of, or can say, the gift the month, the journey of Ramadan. So does this first contact, this first divine contact, then not make the human being, the bunny insan, aware of the brilliance between revelation and reason? But also, the benefit of growth and development. And should that nexus, that emergence, contact, be sustained by the human intellectual effort? Of course, if we want from generation to generation to reap the benefits and really develop. This, brothers and sisters, is what we have emerged from. The journey, Ramadan, by means of the Ibadah of Saul. And also this contact, this divine contact between the reason and revelation should make humanity, humanity aware of a very important aspect. And that aspect is that we should be aware of the pitfall of a self-centered consciousness as opposed to a cosmic-centered consciousness. In other words, if we continue with our self-centered consciousness, The arrogance. Me, you know, the old people in District 6 used to have a saying about the self centered consciousness. They used to say it in Afrikaans, and I would like to say it here. They used to say, Yella blay met die gekke ekke. Gek in Afrikaans meaning this mad thing. Eka, I, self -centered. In other words, that was their way of explaining the self-centeredness, this arrogance. And here, the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rolls out to us a cosmic-centered consciousness where we realize how dependent we are, how significant, insignificant we are in terms of just the size of our solar system. Just how insignificant the solar system is within the size of the Milky Way galaxy. What's still about the size in the background of the universe of Allah? This is what we have been taught or should have been taught if we opened our minds in the journey we've been through the month. Of Ramadan. 
because by means of adopting and steering, guiding into a, a cosmic centered consciousness, in that way, the way, that Sirat the Mustaqim, we well on our way then as past civilizations were of the Muslim to establish a true and worthy Hidara, meaning a true and worthy civilization. And in so doing, we start to realize that a civilization is an evolving developmental process because there is a constant process of improvement in the very instruments of civilization, development, how we move from stage to stage, the development of communications, development of engineering feats, etc., etc., of studies, investigations, and so forth. Therefore, in order to have a true and worthy civilization, we have to sustain it. And that sustenance, that sustainment, is the continuous contact between the revelation and the reason. This is the Iqra. This is what the month of Ramadan conveyed to us. We have to open our minds to see what the real reading of the situation, reading of existence is all about. And so, if we disengage, if we disconnect reason from revelation, then, and I quote, according to Dr. Spursain and Ashraf in their book, Crisis in Muslim Education, and I quote, they say, those who lose touch with the increasing expansion and complexity of the instruments of civilization become backward or remain underdeveloped. And we can see, once we started to move to a self-centered consciousness in opposition to in our history, where Muhammad sallam came to teach us, most people and everybody, but those who followed really towards a cosmic centered consciousness, the civilization of the Muslims flourished. They brought the arts and the sciences and all those feats to the world. But once we started to lapse, disconnect reason from revelation, took things literally and blindly, we moved into backwardness. We became a backwater. In fact, we can say we became the excess baggage of a lost glorious civilization of today. Hence the dictums seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. Utlib al-ilm in al-mahdi la lahdi. Utlib al-ilm wa lawf al-seen. Seek knowledge. Even in China, we all know this. In other words, continuous development, continuous sustainment of rationality and reason. That's what I Ramadan. To revive ourselves for the next, and rejuvenate ourselves for the next 11 months so that we meet Ramadan again, inshallah, and move to the next stage of development of civilization. So brothers and sisters, that is what we have journeyed. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us to commemorate, to rejuvenate ourselves, remind ourselves, replan, re-strategize. So brothers and sisters, we travel through Ramadan and we can say what a beautiful journey it was. But of course, and alas, what a painful embarrassment and hurt 
that came. The perplexity, the, the astonishment, the confusion that came at the end of Ramadan. Absolutely shocking and unbelievable. Has the moon been sighted? Yes, it has. No, it hasn't been sighted. Community were waiting up to into the walk of Ishai. People were cross. People were livid with anger. Things were said. Messages floating around. Absolute chaos. Shocking. And in an analysis of that, we can say, the shocking thing was, the way the evidence, and remember Islam is based on the scrutinization of evidence. The way the evidence was handled or disregarded was beyond ridiculousness. Even though Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advises us, teaches us by saying, Inna Allah yuhibbu al-mu'min al-muhtarif. That verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the one who truly places their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tries to do everything al-muhtarif, everything to the best of the ability. We would translate muhtarif today in our 21st century uh, language as to do everything on the most professional of manners as possible, correctly, accurately. And the evidence, what evidence are we talking about? We're talking about the cosmic evidence. And what is the cosmic evidence? The cosmic evidence is that at that particular point, on that Saturday night, did each and every one know that the moon was over 22 hours old? That's the cosmic evidence. Was there any person or persons who disputed that cosmic evidence? No. So why wasn't that cosmic evidence taken into account? And also, how did we know the moon was more than 22 hours old by means of calculation, astronomical calculation. The last ayah of the first revelation that Allah taught humanity that which we many did not know. In other words, Allah gave us the aql, Allah gave us the rationality, Allah gave us the ability to think, the ability to investigate, to analyze, etc. Right. We say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I be witness there's no other ilaha except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I be witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With what do I be witness, my brothers and sisters? We can only be witness with evidence. If I have strong evidence, I can be a good witness in court, a strong witness. If I have weak evidence, I'm going to be a weak witness. And everybody agrees that the evidence, the cosmic evidence of the moon being more than 22 hours old is undisputed evidence. It makes us all good witnesses. But how we handle the evidence, how we disregarded the evidence, that was most shocking and beyond ridiculousness. And as Allah says to us, clear cut in the Quran, that is the clear evidence for whom? Linnas. For humanity. Not only for the Muslim. And it is a guidance. And it is a mercy unto humanity. But who is going to Realize this. A people that 
moves into in that direction of all the time continuously sustaining the nexus, the emergence between the revelation and reason, not to cut it off. Is that not the purpose of Iqra, brothers and sisters? We just came from Ramadan and the very end of Ramadan, we're not yet into the, just after Maghrib. We cut ourselves off in, in a manner of speaking between the revelation and reason. Now, have we left revelation and reason? Have we created a vacuum, a gap? So brothers and sisters, we have to ask ourselves the question, have we dealt effectively with the evidence or have we been intellectually dishonest? We have to ask our question, that question to ourselves and answer it. Is the way of Iqra not explained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Tell them Muhammad sallallahu that this is the way that my way, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, have been ordained to bring to humanity. فَاتَّبِعُوا In other words, follow it. وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا سُبُلَ فَتَقَدْ فَتَفَرَقُمْ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِ And do not follow any other ways that is going to lead you astray. ذَلِكُمْ وَصَّاكُمْ بِي لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ And that is why this way, the Sirat al-Mustaqeem, which we ask at least 17 times a day in, in our Sirat al-Mustaqeem, has been ordained for humanity so that we do not fall into confusion, so that we can develop a cosmic consciousness and a true civilization, the civilization of Islam. So brothers and sisters, let us deal effectively and honestly, in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Nabi sallallahu explains to us, and I've quoted this hadith so many times already, Da'ma yuribu ka ila ma la yuribu. Leave that which leaves you with doubt, for that which leaves you without doubt. In other words, leave that which leaves you with uncertainty, for that which leaves you with certainty. Right? So, we have to look. Do we take the more accurate evidence as opposed to that which is doubtful because that what happened at the end of Ramadan brothers and sisters it caused immense distress that is what prevails and we as a community, we have to remedy that situation. That inshallah, with our sincere effort, that such a situation of bewilderment, confusion and anger must never ever be allowed to arise again, to occur again, so that we can move forward on the basis of solid evidence according to our shahada and declaration of faith. And in that way, we can construct, develop a true civilization on the basis of the nexus between revelation and reason. Reason as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala communicates to us, we commemorate it in the month of Ramadan. So inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in conclusion to accept our tawbah, to forgive us our shortcomings and our wrongdoings and may inshallah from this day forth having left Ramadan but not having left the, message, the, the, uh, the lessons of Ramadan may our journey continue on this dunya towards the building of a solid real and forward-looking civilization of Islam, insha'Allah, which is a civilization of peace. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that what I've put, insha'Allah. Shukran. Juma Mubarak to each and everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.